Welcome everyone. Today's going to be a rant video. I may not be coherent in my thoughts, but hopefully you're able to draw out some of the themes of what I'm trying to get at. I wanted to talk about fundamental analysis versus technical analysis, and I also wanted to talk about whale status within Cardano. So the reason why I wanted to start with fundamental analysis versus technical analysis is because I am not a technical analysis guy. I do not trade. I have traded in the past. Some trades have been successful, others haven't, but I haven't really understood what goes behind trading. I haven't studied I haven't studied trend lines. I haven't studied a lot of the technical tool terms that you associate with technical trading. Rather, I do more fundamental trading or fundamental hodling or fundamental investing. And people could say that that's probably why my portfolio is hurting like it is. But I draw more joy in doing fundamental analysis versus technical analysis, just a preference, because I like to associate with good projects and I like to give myself credit at the end of the day that I just wasn't trading a whole bunch of things and I traded a good stock or I traded a good crypto, but I understood the crypto project that I was investing in and I put my money where my mouth is. Whether or not that project becomes successful, it is what it is, but I know that I've done my due diligence and I understand what I am putting my money into. So I see a dichotomy when you go on Twitter, for example, I'm talking to the hodlers. Let's start with the hodlers, people that have bought crypto, invested their time, their energy in understanding projects and plan to hold for a said period of time. Whether or not your portfolio is hurting or not, that's not what we're talking about today, but just the people that understand what they're investing in could explain it to uh, a random person in just the layman terms. It doesn't have to be a deep understanding, but you understand that this project is trying to push the ball forward or move the pendulum, swing the pendulum. But when you go on crypto Twitter or various other mediums, there's a dichotomy. Those hodlers or those fundamental analysis guys are often lambasted by technical analysis traders who tell you that every coin is either a shit coin, Bitcoin is the only coin, uh, you only trade shit coins to get more Bitcoin and there's nothing real out there. And this is solely because that's the mentality that they have in order to remove any type of emotional connection that they have towards a project, which shoots their case perfectly well, but doesn't necessarily mean what they're saying is any bit true. It's likely that they're pretty ignorant of any of the projects that they're actually trading and they lie on one spectrum and another person lies on another spectrum. And obviously there are people that are making a lot of money that are doing technical trading. And there are also people that are making a lot of money that are doing hodling, but that takes a longer period of time. I find the whole concept intriguing. And I find that a lot of the people that are successful technical analysis traders, they're, they could be considered whales, but how did they achieve their whale status? It's not necessarily that they were, amazing technical traders from 10 years ago, but they got lucky and they invested at a certain period of time and that has increased in value. And the reason why I say get lucky for those people and maybe not get lucky for people who are investing now is because timing is everything. Let's backtrack 10 years ago. Where were you 10 years ago? Were you too young? Were you too old? Were you doing other things? Did you not even hear of Bitcoin? Those people that had the foresight or they heard of Bitcoin and they decided to throw $100 in or let's say they decided to throw $1,000 in and you know maybe a Bitcoin was a dollar. Maybe they got 100 Bitcoin, maybe they got 1,000 Bitcoin and now you fast forward 10 years later and those people are considered the whales. Those people are moving the markets. Those people are the big dogs in crypto and did they necessarily hodl better than you? No, they hodled at a different time period. And frankly speaking, if you put $1,000 or $5,000 10 years ago, I mean, I think it's a lot less money than what people are playing with now. And it's easier to hold that for a longer, longer period of time and just f kind of forget about it. Because at the end of the day, you know, if you put in $100, you put in $1,000, you put $5,000, it may be a lot of money at that time, but you can hold that with 
greater certainty or greater assurance moving forward. Fast forward now, the prices are so much higher that you need to pay more in order to play the game. So it's actually harder to hodl now. And hence, you have to have stronger hands. It's not as lucky of a process. Forgetting $100 and buying 100 Bitcoin 10 years ago, it's not the same now. I mean, you put $100 in Bitcoin now, that's fine, you know, but uh, how high will that price eventually go? How high will your portfolio value go? Will it go to 1,000? Will it go to 1,500? Yeah, I mean, that's great money, but at the end of the day, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not astronomical, not like what people were making back then. Hence why I say lucky back then, and now it's more of a process in order to understand how to gain wealth or pick the right projects. So this whale status, you know, people look towards these technical traders, these whales as the epitome or the as the pinnacle of knowledge when in reality most of them don't understand what's happening with the projects so my advice this is not financial advice is to understand the project that you're investing in be able to explain it to someone in layman's terms and know where you're putting your money in that's what i do i try to understand where my money is going this way i have a i'm assured that I'm stepping in the right direction. Even if there are missteps along the way and certain projects don't pan out, it is what it is. At least I know that I put my best foot forward and I did my due diligence. That's all you can ask for at the end of the, at the, end of the day. And the experience that you're gaining now is incredible because there's going to be a time, say Cardano becomes very successful and it becomes similar to Ethereum, you know, not necessarily in market cap, but there are a lot of dApps that are building on Cardano and there are a lot of new projects that are coming in. Think about all the experience you're going to gain. Think about how much of a leg up you're going to have and think about how you're going to be able to spot those money-making projects before anyone, before the technical traders. And because you have that knowledge, that knowledge base and fundamental analysis and you understand where things are going, you really have a leg up. So regardless of what happens today, if you stick around, I think you're going to be able to find the thing that you're looking for. Moving forward, so let, that's the talk about whales. So don't let it discourage you. Don't let the, the banter on Twitter or the banter online about how you're doing this wrong, this wrong, this wrong. Don't let it disturb you. Focus on what you need to focus on. Figure out the projects that work for you. Make sure that they are technically strong. Make sure they're fundamentally strong and, and just go for it. Go for it. You know, there's not financial advice, but understand what you're investing in and there's no more there are no more questions after that let it ride because you're so early that of course it's going to be risky you could lose but you could also win big when you look at whales or you look at very wealthy people it's always assumed that their knowledge is somehow more than the average person when in reality there's no real correlation and in fact the, the larger the bag is or the larger the whale status is, especially when they're, they're diversifying their assets, you, you tend to find that it's an inverse relationship. They know less about individual products. They really know nothing about individual products. They pick up on trends and just their money can back a project and maybe make it successful. And the reason why they got to their status, remember, you only have to be correct once. Because that's what's going to give you your 100x. And then you can fail 10, 15, 20 times again. And then you just have to be right once. That's what it is. Whales, you know, they're in every single game. Very wealthy people, they're in every single game. Doesn't mean they know more than what you are doing within a certain project. They may have some kind of insider information for certain projects or know where it's leading. But doesn't mean that they own the tech. Know the tech better than you. You know, for every Uber out there, there's a Terranos. If you look at the stock market, there are many IPOs that fail and there are many IPOs that succeed. You hear about the ones that succeed, but you don't hear about the ones that fail. And a lot of these big investors, they invest in both. They invest in both. They'll invest in 100 companies and five of them will make it big and get all their money back plus some interest. And then they'll be lauded as these gurus. But in reality, they just threw all their chips at the roulette table and... <laughs> They're automatic winners. So think about it like that. Moving forward, let's hit that crypto whale status within Cardano. 
Cardano is an interesting project. I did some calculations the other day and it's estimated that there are probably around 30,000 to 60,000 millionaires from Bitcoin at this particular time. The market cap for Bitcoin, I believe, is 114 times the market cap of Cardano. It may be a little bit more. I may be doing my calculations incorrect. So I did a back of the envelope calculation. So, you know, if you're the top 300, what would I consider whale status within Cardano? I would say that if you look at the rankings and you look at the amount of millionaires that Bitcoin has and then proportionately decrease it to Cardano because Cardano is like a little bit old, uh, like 114 times smaller than Bitcoin, then you get a number of around 7 million ADA. So I think that roughly equates to like the top 300. That's what I would consider whale status. People that have 7 million ADA and up. And it's interesting because IOHK just gave a grant to the University of Wyoming and they gave them $500,000 in ADA, which roughly equates to 7 million ADA at today's prices. So I would consider that if you own 7 million plus ADA, you're probably a whale. What would you consider whale status within Cardano? I mean, this is like mega whale status. Maybe there's a tier under that, but this is what I would consider whale status at this point, especially within these bearish times. As the price increases, there will be more and more whales. 7 million ADA, that's what I consider whale status. Every 15 or so cents, you get a million dollars. That's what I consider whale status. It will be interesting to see how that distribution changes over time, but that's what I consider. These numbers are tell us a lot. While they may seem random at some points, you can use them to extrapolate. Well, I use them to extrapolate what I think the price will go to in the future. I look at the market cap, I look at the individual statuses of people within the project, I compare them with the rich list of what people are rich in the traditional world. I look at a various different factors to determine what the actual price could be within Cardano. But whale status, I consider that around 7 million plus ADA. I'm not nowhere near that, but that's what I consider whale status. Let me know what you think about this video. And until the next video, this was just a rant. I know it wasn't coherent or fluid, but I tried my best. All right, until the next video, everyone. Bye.